Hello from Who Died Today America, and welcome back to our channel. In the past few days, we have received somber news about the passing of extraordinary talents. Today's episode is dedicated to honoring their memory. Additionally, we will recap the stars whom we have recently lost. Before we begin, we kindly ask for your support. If this video or the legacies of these remarkable individuals have touched your life, please consider giving this video a thumbs up as a sign of respect and remembrance. Thank you. David Gale, a cherished figure in television drama known for his memorable roles in Beverly Hills and Port Charles, passed away at the age of 58. His sister, Katie Colmenares, shared the heart-wrenching news, paying tribute to Gale as her lifelong wingman and best friend, whose presence will be profoundly missed. With his portrayals of Dr. Joe Scanlon in Port Charles and Stuart Carson, Brenda Walsh's fiancé in Beverly Hills, Gale made a lasting impression on the entertainment world and demonstrated his range as an actor. Born on February 27, 1965, in Tampa, Florida, Gale embarked on his acting journey with a guest appearance on Growing Pains in 1990, setting the stage for a career filled with diverse and impactful roles. His talent shone through in the WB soap Savannah, where he played Dean Collins, captivating audiences with his performance from 1996 to 1997. His work in films such as Some Girl, Bending All the Rules, Perfect Opposites, and The Belly of the Beast further solidified his place in the film industry. David Gale's passing is a significant loss to his family, friends, and fans, who will remember him not only for his contributions to entertainment, but also for the warmth and kindness he exuded off-screen. His legacy will continue to inspire those who knew him and the many more who were touched by his work. David M.G., a venerated actor beloved by horror aficionados for his role as Flyboy in George A. Romero's seminal film Dawn of the Dead, has died at 77. M.J. passed away on January 20th at the West River Health Campus in Evansville, Indiana. The cause of his death was not disclosed. Born on September 9, 1946, M.G.'s early life was marked by his dedication to drama, which he studied at the University of Evansville, graduating with a Bachelor of Arts degree. His commitment extended beyond the arts as he served in the U.S. Army during the Vietnam War. M.G.'s acting career began on stage in the early 1970s, before making his film debut in The Booby Hatch in 1975, followed by roles in The Liberation of Cherry Janowski and The Devil and Sam Silverstein. His encounter with George A. Romero, a legendary figure in horror cinema, led to his iconic role in Dawn of the Dead, where he portrayed Stephen Andrews, known as Flyboy. His portrayal left an indelible mark on the genre, particularly through the unforgettable scene of Flyboy's zombified return. M.G. continued to contribute to the horror genre, appearing in Basket Case 2 and Hellmaster, among other projects. His involvement in Dawn of the Dead and its enduring popularity led to appearances in several documentaries and made him a cherished figure at horror conventions. Emge's legacy is carried on by his three sisters, Sue, Kathleen, and Barbara, along with his nieces, nephews, great-nieces, and great-nephews. His passing is mourned by fans and peers alike, who remember him not only for his pivotal role in horror cinema, but also for the warmth and camaraderie he shared with the horror community. Larry Zimmer, an iconic voice in Colorado sports broadcasting, passed away surrounded by his family at the age of 88. Known for his deep association with both the Denver Broncos and the University of Colorado Buffaloes, Zimmer's legacy spans over five decades, making him a revered figure in the sports community. His death was confirmed by KOA radio station, where he had been a staple voice for more than a quarter of a century. Zimmer's voice became synonymous with Colorado sports, earning him the affectionate title, The Voice of the Buffaloes. His tenure with the Broncos saw him commentating from 1971 to 1989, after which he took on play-by-play -play responsibilities until 1996. Over his career, he narrated more than 500 Broncos games, including 20 postseason matchups and four Super Bowls, cementing his status as a legendary figure in sports broadcasting. 
Beyond the NFL, Zimmer made significant contributions to college sports, calling 486 football games for the University of Colorado, along with 525 men's basketball games and additional games for the University of Michigan and Colorado State University. His overall tally exceeds 1-100 games between college sports and the NFL, showcasing his vast impact and dedication to the field. Zimmer's expertise also extended into academia, where he served as an adjunct professor of broadcasting at the University of Colorado for 11 years. His educational contributions further highlight his commitment to nurturing future generations of broadcasters. Born in New Orleans, Zimmer's early life saw him attending LSU and the University of Missouri, followed by a commendable service in the U.S. Army, for which he was awarded the Army Commendation Medal. His passing has prompted the University of Colorado to plan a moment of silence in his honor, reflecting the deep respect and admiration he garnered throughout his illustrious career. Zimmer's family has requested donations to Opera Colorado or the Larry and Bridget Zimmer, sports announcing endowed scholarship at the University of Colorado in lieu of flowers ensuring his legacy will continue to inspire and impact the world of sports broadcasting for years to come. Bridget Dobson, a pioneering figure in daytime television and co-creator of the iconic soap opera Santa Barbara, has passed away at the age of 85. Her death marks the end of a storied career that not only enriched the soap opera genre, but also left an indelible mark on American pop culture. Dobson, Born into a legacy of soap opera royalty as the daughter of General Hospital co-creators, Frank and Doris Hursley continued her family's tradition of storytelling with her husband, Jerome Dobson, by her side. The couple's partnership brought to life Santa Barbara, which aired from 1984 to 1993 and garnered critical acclaim, including three consecutive Daytime Emmy Awards for Outstanding Daytime Drama Series. Dobson's journey in the world of soap operas was characterized by innovation and a desire to take risks. This was evident in her acceptance speech at the 1988 Daytime Emmy Awards, where she highlighted the challenges faced during her tenure on Santa Barbara, including a notable lockout by New World Television. Despite these obstacles, Dobson's commitment to storytelling never wavered, and she continued to push the boundaries of the genre. Santa Barbara stood out for its sophisticated approach to character development and its willingness to explore complex themes with humor and depth. Dobson's influence extended beyond Santa Barbara. She had a significant impact on other soap operas, including As the World Turns, Guiding Light, and General Hospital, where she served in various capacities as a head writer alongside her husband. Dobson's legacy is one of creativity, resilience, and innovation. Her work on Santa Barbara and other daytime dramas not only entertained millions, but also paved the way for future generations of storytellers in the soap opera industry. Her passing was mourned by colleagues and fans alike, with tributes highlighting her contributions to television and her role as a mentor to many in the industry. Bridget Dobson's passing leaves behind a rich legacy that will continue to inspire those in the world of soap operas and beyond. She is survived by her husband Jerome, their daughter Mary, and a community of colleagues and fans who will forever cherish her contributions to the world of daytime television. Francisco Ciazzo was a well-liked character in the indie wrestling scene, especially in Florida and Georgia. His sudden death has left the wrestling community in mourning. In addition to his in-ring skills, Ciazzo, who was only 48 years old, made a lasting impression on both fans and other wrestlers, leaving an enduring legacy in the professional wrestling industry. Francisco was born in New York City, where he received training under the renowned Adrian Street and refined his craft at the WCW power plant. This led to a dynamic and multifaceted career filled with multiple promotions. A key player in independent professional wrestling, IPW, Ciazzo, also known as Frankie Capone in the ring, engaged in noteworthy feuds and teamed up with Marcus Dillon as Double Deuce Inc. to win the NWA Florida Tag Team Championship. 
He competed against well-known wrestlers like Abyss, Chris Daniels, and Jeff Jarrett on NWA TNA TV, showcasing his skill and commitment to the sport and bringing him to a national audience. His career has saw stints in WWE developing territories and enhancement work on WWE TV, demonstrating his versatility and enthusiasm for the sport of wrestling. Beyond the Ropes, Journeyman, a 2019 Los Angeles Film Awards Best Documentary winner that emphasized Chiazzo's ongoing career, honored his achievements in wrestling. His abrupt exit, which is thought to have happened while he was sleeping after he withdrew from a planned WWN Proving Ground performance because of illness, stunned and devastated the wrestling community. Those who were impacted by Francisco Chiazzo's captivating performances and unwavering commitment to professional wrestling, as well as his peers and fans, are grieving over his passing. Our sympathies are with his friends, family, and the innumerable people who are grieving the death of a great wrestling icon. Everyone who was fortunate enough to see Francisco Chiazzo's journey through the world of professional wrestling will surely remember and honor his enthusiasm and contributions to the sport.